Lovely day everyone and today we are with the one and only Lovella Dadai Joaquin and she is one of the female forerunners in the Davao art scene and she is a full-time impressionist, art impressionist artist going strong with five solo exhibits ever since 2010. So Miss Dadai, it is a wonderful experience to finally meet you in person. So how are you feeling today, Bob? I'm fine, feeling good. So okay now and mm, yeah. So without further ado, let us start okay. with our interview. How old were you when you first discovered that you had an inclination to the mm. arts? Since I was a little kid, as far as I could remember, mm. I drew colored a little bit, but with the absence of materials, coloring mm. materials, all you had as a child would be crayons, right? Mm. So that's all I played with. So I never got to paint until 2000. 2000. Yeah. Considering that you resources were very limited for you back then, so how did you improve your skills and develop an art style of your own? Well, let me first uh, quickly tell you the history. I first started painting in soil. Oh, soil. Okay. Uh, if you've seen some of the paintings of the Lumads mm -hmm. from Bukidnon, yeah. the soil paintings mm -hmm. in Min Art, so I used to paint that way also because mm. nga walang materials and it was hard to get materials in Davao before. I got featured in the Inquirer Ooh. for the soil paintings that I did. Okay. So I got featured in the Inquirer, I got mileage and I got invited to my first group exhibit in 2002 because of that. No, 2001. How did your parents respond to your talent? Oh, okay. So as far as I could remember, I was doing this or I liked art. No? And I have a big memory of asking my mother if I could take fine arts. Ooh. Of course, the answer was no, there's no money there. Yeah. They were, they, Very they, common they, answer. Uh, so we were all made to take up nursing. Mm, nursing. <laughs> Yeah, but I did not finish. I shifted to psychology when I... I'm curious that, as an artist yourself, I want to know who is your idol in the field of arts? Okay. In the field of arts, my idol, in the, in the masters, I would, I would say that since I am an impressionist, I always admire the works of Mat Manet, mm -hmm. but I like Pizarro, Camille Pizarro better. Oh, yes. I like his colors and the way he, he strokes. Monet I like but you know, parang ano na, parang pili ko cliche na kasi yeah. lahat si Monet yeah, ang gusto. <laughs> so I like Pizarro, the mm. way he uses the colors. It's very, it's very consistent with my color theory. Mm. Basically, okay, so this is the masters, right? Mm. So in the process of learning, when in, in the journey of my art practice, mm. I had mentors. One of mm. these people was a lady artist named Rachel Olazo. Mm. The concepts that she had and the execution of each mm. concept. But I was too shy to ask her to teach me. Mm. So I would, you know, just like this, talk to her, talk and listen. Now for the exciting part, I am going to ask you about your own paintings. Well. Okay. So for the first painting, we have Ang Mag Ani Di Biro. So tell us more about it. Okay. This piece, because you know, I just thought of, you know, I had a fascination of painting grass or blades of yeah. grass and mga anak palay. So I wanted to do it. So I gathered my friends mm -hmm. on a trip to the Kabugangan and we shot references. Mother and child. So tell us more about it, bro. This is a gouache uh, exploration, explorations in gouache. I tried it on this subject, which is me and Laya. Oh, I see. Sunday. Yes. So that is more. And please elaborate to us more about the styles and techniques that you use. For. So this uh, is a picture of my friend, of her kids mm -hmm. and her kids' friends playing. So I love, you know, the play of light and yes. how the kids are backlit, the light on the head and all that, and the foreground shadows, cast shadows. I love that. So I asked her if I could paint it and yeah, she's in Canada. She, it's too bad she did not get, to oh, get the piece. Okay, mm -hmm. na siya. We have Over the Bakon. So it's mm -hmm. a very interesting title to start. So tell us <laughs> more about it. It's a simple landscape. Every now and then I would take a break from commissioned pieces mm -hmm. and 
do what I usually call uh, dula dula. Mm. You know, just you know, uh, simple projects that I can do quickly. That's just for fun. Mm. Uh, this is one of them. A quick landscape. Quick landscape. Mm. So, so yeah, they're usually just you know a refresh. Parang ano lang, pahinga. This is already pahinga for me. <laughs> yeah, pahinga. It's very simple, easy to execute. I can do it in a few hours or so. How about this piece that you said? It took one year. Oh my gosh, so yes. So this painting is called okay. Coil and Pond. So yeah. tell us more about it. Okay, there are pieces that are commissioned. So this is a commissioned piece. I sold, I already sold at this point, uh, three of the table pieces of Harvest. Mm. And then somebody else wanted a, a collector, my, one of my collectors, gusto pa ng table piece. So, but uh, I offered, how about, uh, ako daw bahala. Okay, how about a koi in fun so that I, it's a new project. So this is what I did, but every now and then when I get tired, ma I, you know, I leave a project. Yeah. I leave a project and then sometimes it gets tedious and I, I do not want to come back to it yet. Mm. So it was not because it was hard to do. It was because I get tired of it. I have a lot of questions especially regarding your art style okay i'm Fine. very interested especially so in your gouache i'm interested in gouache so like mm -hmm. what's the determining factor like why do you prefer watercolor um i like that the trickiness or the what they call the difficulty of the medium when you use watercolor in watercolor we avoid using white Mm. Did you know that? So there's a lot of planning and you know careful planning and slow work mm -hmm. that that is entailed there so that you leave out the white. Speaking of planning, like as an artist, I mean personally, like I'm a planner, so like I mm. could never imagine I'm myself not. <laughs> as an artist because uh -huh. um, many of your subjects actually are like flowers or like um, things from nature. So. Why do you why do you have flowers or like any nature as part of your subject? Flowers are very relatable. Mm -hmm. Of how relatable flower subjects mm -hmm. are. I do not paint just flowers. If you look yeah. at my body of work, there are equally many paintings that are of human figures mm -hmm. and landscapes mm -hmm. as flowers. But people remember flowers. Yes. They would say Oh, your specialty is flowers, right? And I say, not really. <laughs> it's the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, but that's what they remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, you mentioned that you use a lot of pastel, a lot mm -hmm. of like colors, and like we rarely see black or like brown or like darker colors. So, oh, why is that? I come for a workshop. That's color theory. I do not have black. Mm -hmm. I do not use black. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific reason? Yes, oh. and the workshop is all about that. <laughs> Can you share a little, of a little, a little okay. bit of your lesson? It's the physics of light. Oh. Do you remember physics? Yes. Okay. Physics is actually my favorite science. Oh, ah, yeah, me too. Over the years, I realized why, and I said, oh my gosh, this is the physics of light. Oh. Okay, so when you're looking at an object, mm -hmm. the color that you perceive in an object is the mm -hmm. the photons, the, the rays yeah. that are being absorbed by mm -hmm. the by the surface of an object, right? Yeah. I mean that that are being reflected yeah. back. And what is absorbed, you are not able to perceive it. Now black is what? The absence of color. The absence <laughs> of color. That means when all the rays are being absorbed. Mm -hmm. So that you do not perceive you don't see any color at all. Mm -hmm. So black is the absence of color. So that when you use black in a painting, mm -hmm. it looks like a hole. It does not give you the correct interpretation of shadow. Mm -hmm. You recently had a public exhibit, right? And for you, Paul, is having, is having a public exib uh, exhibit very important to an artist? Mm. And why? Why not? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, the exhibits are important in the sense that, well, with the with this in this time and age, with the advent of the internet and the social media, it is not that imperative anymore to exhibit in that sense. No, kay sa una when I started, we would paint and we would wait for months before anybody could see our paintings, mm -hmm. right? We have to wait until there's an exhibit and then you put it up, have them frame, put it up, and then that's the only time they see your painting. And then in 
in 2007 when I first signed up for Facebook, I think I realized that you can get instant audience yes. with from for your work and you know instant gratification because you immediately see the reaction of people to your sure. work. So with that, the exhibits are not that imperative in terms of audience, but it is only important because it is one way to build your resume mm -hmm. and your practice. Have you had any like people comment about your art and are any of them like really like affect you or like very memorable? Memorable in a positive way or negative way? You have to be very comfortable in sharing. Okay. Well, I have come to a point where, you know, I do not want to be smug about it, but yes. if you look if you look at my post, there would be a number of, you know, reactions, always positive. Yes. Na. So wala na lang ako siya gina reply, isa isa kay Well, it will I will take all of my time and then but more like you get used to it now. Yeah. People like it because it, my work is generally about happy subjects mine and i do not do a lot of uh social commentary work so do not elicit a lot of discussion or debate over subjects of my work okay ano lang siya ano mga happy yeah it's happy i just like to paint beautiful things you know because the hardships are everywhere they're in our everyday life you know why would you want to hang a painting of of a of hunger and of yeah. difficulty and all that on your wall. When you could spread it. Yes, when you want beautiful. to be reminded of beautiful things instead, mm -hmm. diba? As one of the female forerunner in the Labo City art scene, what advice can you give to local female artists to establish themselves since the art scene in Davao is male dominated? Well, actually, there are so many female artists. Well, the exhibits are a way for them to engage more people, for them to be exposed to more people, right? Let's say, uh, well, my audience would be, halimbawa ako, I'm a new artist and I have this many friends, kanilang sa Facebook. But my friends have seen my work. When you join an exhibit, you get more people, new people to see your work. So that in that sense, it's nice no? for the exhibits for ex in terms of exposure for the artist. But the more important thing is for an artist to engage the audience let's say you see my work okay and then somebody buys your work you engage them and you follow up you keep the relationship going because you know they will keep seeing your work they will keep seeing your growth as an artist and the new works that you have they will follow you really i'm back Ma. and my question is what are your thoughts on art that is intentionally made to make a political statement towards the government? Such as the comic by Tarantado Calvo called to Mindig, like this one box. Oh, this one. Okay, you know I am a very apolitical person. Apolitical? Yes, you know. Well, the reason is I get affected. I am very emotional and I get affected. So what I do is I avoid news. I do not. I seriously am the last person to know about things. So in terms of politics, halimbawa, I find out something that's troubling. I get disturbed, literally get disturbed. And it upsets me that I cannot do anything about it. So wala na lang ko nagetan <laughs> If you weren't an artist, what career would you have now? So I studied psychology. So that was my fallback. But that was the fallback. That was the plan. What would be your message to your followers and of course to up and coming young local artists? Keep painting. Do not let anything intimidate you. You will get in the in the course of your career, you will get intimidated by literally about anything, about everything. And a lot more, you know, unfriendly colleagues. Do not let anything intimidate you. Just keep painting. So that wraps up our interview with Miss Daday Joaquin. So it has been a very wonderful experience. Thank and you so much. It's our pleasure to have you for the opportunity to interview and get to know more about you both. Sure, anytime. Okay. Thank you. So once again, give it up for Miss Daday Joaquin, the next Philippine national artist. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your cats and your dogs. And then they are. <laughs>